Hi friends. Let's see if I can find you so I can pin you here. Wow, it actually popped right up today. That's a shocker. Okay. Alrighty. Oops. Um, <laughs> just happened to pick it. Glad I could help. Karen. All right. Let me pull this up so I can see the comments. There we go. Good morning. Hi, Rhonda. Rhonda, you're not far from... Uh, Vegas then, Henderson. I've driven through Henderson before when we went to the Grand Canyon. Good morning from Wisconsin. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Marlene. Hi, Donna. Hi, Judy. Hope everyone is well today. It's very chilly here. I have my flannel <laughs> long sleeves on. Chilly, chilly, chilly. And then we have Adrian, Kelly. All right, I, can, I caught up now. Pam. The new job is very fun, but very exhausting, <laughs> but fun. It's very fun. The kids are really fun. I love all their personalities. Hi, Heather. Hi, Marilyn. Nice to see you guys today. Hi, Patricia. So today I was actually going to do, and I'm going to show you what I was going to do, and then I'm going to show you what I'm going to do instead. So I made these cards. Where did I put them? Did I put them down? Sure did. So I made these cards in a, um, I'll say somewhat failed attempt. And I think I talked about this. <laughs> I did miss you all. I certainly did. In a failed attempt at my Fast and Fabulous series, which I know I'm going to get back on. I have some time tomorrow to film one for next week. And I was going to redo them, but I'm still just so not happy with how they really look in the grand scheme of things. Or it's a little dim in here today. So here was one. And here was another. This one turned out really cute. I like this one. I still think I need to do that. Here was number three. And then here was number four. So what I actually did is I used window sheet on this one. But I feel like it doesn't pop enough. However, I did window sheet to be able to show you something else you could do with it. But I still feel like it kind of needs white in the background. So I might do these as three or four individual cards. Because I don't feel like as my normal would be, they don't feel cohesive enough for like a, a group. They are all the same color and they use most of the same supplies, but they're just not like, remember when I did the moose one, like they all just progressed. These just didn't feel like a good progression. So I still have these on hold. So I didn't forget about them. I'm just trying to make them better. New Hampshire is freezing. I've heard it really is really, really cold. As a matter of fact, I was just um, <laughs> looking at Tammy's um, Facebook page and they are out jet skiing I think for or boarding or whatever they do in the back of the boat and I'm thinking I can't even imagine getting in water this time of year because it's cold in Maryland I can't imagine what it's like in um, Boston I think she lives a little bit to the west of Boston but still crazy so what I decided we're gonna use today as an oldie and maybe you some are some of you already have this so we're gonna do winter woods and then one other thing I wanted to show you, in case you didn't see, because this paper is really, really pretty. So this is the Snowflake Splendor Designer Series paper. And I'm going to show you because it has two different sides. And one side is kind of more, definitely is more snowflakey. And the other side is much more neutral, kind of almost watercolorish. So you could really do a lot of other things with it. So. This is the one side. You can see you have all different snowflakes. 
This one goes very well with Coastal Cabana, Balmy Blue, Highland Heather, Misty Moonlight, Night of Navy, Pacific Point Pool Party. But the other side, in case you were like, eh, the other side is really pretty. It has a lot of watercolor images. So you can see this one is beautiful. This would make a really great, um, also like a galaxy sky or like a night sky if you wanted to do like a winter night card, which I think would be pretty. And I really like the water spotting on this card. It's so pretty. And then this one is very ethereal. So if you haven't seen that paper, so that's what I originally used on my other cards. That is here, and that actually has a, a big two-page spread. That's the Snowflake Splendor bundle. And you see it has the paper up here. So it's really, really pretty. So if you haven't taken a look at that, I don't have anything else except the Balmy Blue Glimmer paper in that suite. But... And, and the ribbon. I do have the ribbon. But the paper is so pretty. Isn't it beautiful, Debbie? It's really just, it, it's it's beautiful. It looks like the paper from last month's Paper Pumpkin. That's really cool. I like it a lot. It's a very, very pretty paper. And I think it'll lend really well to doing maybe not only Christmas cards, but you know how we kind of forget about winter because you're like, ooh, Valentine's Day? A lot of people, myself included, who have birthdays who are in January or early February or the time when it's still winter but everybody's already moving forward to spring, that would make a great birthday card. I think it would also make a really nice card for um, maybe a thinking of you card if you wanted to send it, even so far as a sympathy card because it's really, really beautiful. The background of the paper, when you see it in person, you can appreciate it much better. It's really, really pretty. So let me move this over and I, I will say... I have a cough drop because today I was um, picking out on something and I swallowed it and it went down the wrong hole. So I have like this little, so sorry about my cough drop. I'll try to keep that out of the way. All right. So one more thing I have, and I know I'm not super loud. I'll plug this in. So I do have my microphone. So once I go down, the catalog doesn't do any of the paper justice, does it? Because you get it. I mean, there's a couple of them where you can see like the, um, Trimming the Town, that DSP, you can tell it's very pretty. It's really interactive. It has a lot of a really nice look to it. But just the fact of some of the paper, the nuances of the paper, you you just can't appreciate it unless you see it in person. Which leads me to, I will do another DSP share for the Occasions catalog. We have some time, thankfully, because we had catalog, catalog, back to back because the way it ran this year. But anyway, so we're going to be using Winter Woods today. Now, Winter Woods, and I'm going to show you because I got this out so you could see. So this is a stamp set that carried over. So some of you may have this, which will be great. But it also does have coordinating dies. And I'm going to show you those as well. And they might look a little weird. And you might be like this. I'm just going to throw this over my shoulder for now. These are kind of crazy. But they have some really pretty die cuts. So it's this right here. So you get these two skinny trees. There's also something to make a slope. It has three of the little cutouts for the pine. It has two for the pine cone. Then it also has a big die cut tree, which will cut out the whole stamp tree. And then another one that's a little bit more detailed. So it's got a lot of stuff in it. Now, currently you can't buy it as a bundle any longer because the bundle portion retired, but it's got enough stuff in it that I think I'm trying to find a plot to put this. I think you will really appreciate it. So we're going to make three cards today at least. I'll shoot for four, but we'll see how we get going there. Um, we're going to make three cards for sure. It also has, is this, I think this is in the wrong set now that I'm pulling this out. One, four, seven, nine, one, nine. Let me see. I don't feel like this goes. Nope, it does. It also has, which I thought <laughs> this wasn't part of it. It has this little die too. I'm kind of glad it is because otherwise I was going to have to search for that one. Hi, Wendy. Hi, Debbie. So thank you guys for joining if you're stopping in um, after we've already started. Thank you all for the shares. I do appreciate that, especially since I haven't been on quite as much just um, intermittently. It helps me to be seen if people are looking for me. So I did get a Facebook alert, so that is a shocker in itself today. So I'm going to flip you guys around and we're going to get started. We closed the pool the other day, which is probably pretty good timing considering it's freezing out. Alright, give me one sec. 
We always get that shout out to Lake Tahoe there. My dad brought me that book back. Bookmark back. All right, I'm going to plug in my mic. Okay, so just I just want to make sure while I'm setting up that everyone can still hear me. So for some reason you can't, please give a holler and let me know, but it looks pretty good. So, nice to be appreciated. Oh, oh my goodness, look at that series talking to me. I'm not even talking to you. Stop talking. I don't know <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> hey, Rick. <laughs> Luckily, my Wi-Fi is working really well. Thanks to my, my neighbor, Rick, helped me with some stuff with Google the other day. So I thought what we could do for this, for the background, is navy. So I'm going to grab two full sheets of navy. So we're going to make one very simple and then we're going to kind of step it up from there. So I'm also going to grab, actually I'm not going to do my whisper white yet Oops. because I have a couple panels of that already. And then if I need to, we can always bring in some thick. So there's some whisper white. And I did bring in a couple extra sentiments just because I wasn't sure if maybe that's the only bummer about this stamp set. It just has one, which I love all the stuff, but I did bring a few extras in just in case. I kind of thought we could always add, you can do this. You could always make this into a thinking of you, wishing you well kind of card. So that's another one. What else did I grab? You have some great sentiments too and framed for you. So I brought those over kind of just in case. And then I thought this one would be a really nice one too. Um, let your faith be bigger than your fear. So I thought that would go really nicely with this as well. So those are kind of just my ideas. And let me see, I'm gonna grab my score. So I'm gonna score and I'm gonna make these so they are, um, so they're wide. So I'm actually gonna score both of these at four and a quarter. Oops. One quick thing to note. So you see, I jumped the track on this one. If you have that happen repeatedly, if you're using the Simply Scored, one other thing you can do is just keep a piece of, and it doesn't have to be like every time clean, but if you keep a piece of wax paper handy and you rub it over your cardstock before you trace your line down, it actually helps it to stay in the grooves a little bit better. So just a little tidbit there for you. We're going to cut both of these and I'm just going to do all these at once. That's the nice part about this trimmer. It's a little bit bigger. It can handle more than one sheet of paper. All right, so then I have four bases, okay? And one of these, I know I definitely want to be five, three and three quarters. That's a little bit smaller than I wanted for the first one. Four, okay, we're gonna use this one first. So this is gonna be our simple card. So this is gonna kind of be fast to fabulous only with more talking. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my winter woods trees Okay, now I did go back and I'm hoping you can see that. You see that piece there? I actually went back and if you've not done this before because this is one of the old cling mounts which we all know did not cling. So what I did is I go back and I actually use the little extra pieces from the new stamp sets and I put them on the back so you can see there's that little teeny strip there. So I retrofitted these. So basically instead of buying that stuff that they had in the catalog before they put that out, I just used the extra little pieces. So if you have those, you can use that. I do have um, a few videos on my YouTube page, so you can always check that out. All right, so let me see what I did for my design for this one. So I'm going to do the trees in navy, and we're going to need a big block for this. And since it's a large stamp, what I like to do is I actually like to flip it over. And you can see even with that little piece, it does hold it in because it's not falling off. But I like to flip it over. That way you make sure that you ink it very uh, evenly all over. So I'm going to take my Knight of Navy. And you could totally do this in a different color. So you could have tone on tone. You could do this in grays. You could do it in, I think early espresso would be a little dark. I think I would stick with soft suede if you wanted to do a brown version. Um, maybe Blackberry Bliss would look nice. If you want to do something a little more fall, you could try cinnamon cider. 
So I'm just going to place my trees. So I'm going to kind of pick a spot. So I don't really want it necessarily centered, but I'm going to have it centered this way, but not centered uh, horizontally. And I just want to make sure that I give this a lot because it does have a lot of detail in this stamp. So that turned out nicely. And the only other thing we're going to add to this is our sentiment, but I also want to do one more thing. I'm going to grab just to give this some grounding. And this one, yeah, I did put a little sticker on there too. This one is kind of like the bottom or the, like the mound that it would sit on. But what I want to do is I actually want to stamp this off. So I'm going to do this again in Night of Navy, but I want it to be a little bit lighter. So I'm going to ink it, stamp it off. There's one. And I'm going to flip it over just so it doesn't look exactly the same. Okay, so just like that, very simple. And the only other thing I want to add is my sentiment. Let me just spritz this real quick. Clean this off. Looks good. All right, and I'm going to just use this but I'm not going to do this season I'm just going I just wanted to say thinking of you so what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of masking so I'm going to grab just some of my tape you guys know I always have extra tape that I've used for a million different things so I'm just going to tape this off so I'm just putting this tape on top we can even rip these little extra pieces and save them for something else because it doesn't have to be that big so I'm just making sure that all of my image, or all of the letters I want stamped are not covered. So I'm going to take this and get up. I just want to test this. It looks good. Okay, so ink it up. Okay, then you're going to take your tape, just peel it off. And I'm just going to say, thinking of you. Hopefully it's centered. That looks good. All right, so I'm going to close this up for now just so we can put this together. So that is one. Now, it's a little bit flat. You could always sponge the edge if you want to. But what we're going to do is this. I'm going to open this up. Throw this in the trash so I don't get ink on anything. And just to give it a little bit of something, doesn't have to be a lot, I have my champagne shimmer paint, and it's mixed in here with alcohol. I'm just giving it a good shake because I haven't used it in a while. You will notice that it all settles at the bottom if you haven't used it, and I'm going to give this a good spritz. Now, one thing about this to keep in mind, it can make your ink bleed. So just be careful that you, you kind of look at it. Now, alcohol won't make it bleed as much. If it had water in it, it definitely would bleed a little bit more. And I'm going to just see. Do I have this plugged in? I just want to hit this just for a minute just to flatten it a little bit. Okay. So this is a really, really simple card. Move this over, grab my base. Obviously, for Knight of Navy, you're definitely going to need to have a white layer on the inside. And make sure that looks nice and dry. And anytime you spritz something and you have the, the uh, potential for curling, just make sure you use a really strong adhesive. So one other thing, really simple card. You could do one other step for this to make it a little bit less simple is you could cut this down to three and three quarters by five. So you could make it a smaller layer and then you could put a layer of silver behind there or silver would be nice. Or even if you did a layer of maybe balmy blue and then you have two layers. So easy card. All you have to do is you do have to add your inside because obviously you're not going to be able to see unless you're going to write in a white pen. So 
You're going to stamp on the inside and that's it. So there's card one. Okay, card two. I'm just trying to make sure I'm following the pattern of what I wanted to do correctly. So this will be three and three quarters. So same thing again, same base. This over here so we're ready. And what I'm gonna do is you have this little, kind of like a ski slope, and you can make this go whichever way you want, but I'm gonna have it like this. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna just use both pieces. So this is going to be, this one's a little bit smaller. So remember this was three and three quarters by five. So what you're going to do is I'm just going to tape this in place. So it kind of is where it is. Okay. So that's going to be one. And then I'm going to grab a couple scrap pieces. Mm, let's see if I have any skinny ones. That's good. So I'm going to grab these two trees. And we're going to die cut both of these and I'm going to put this so it fits on here kind of evenly. Oh, and before, one tip, one tip to tell you, because this will make this so much easier. If you have some adhesive sheet, now is the time because these are going to be really detailed. So what we're going to do is we're going to lift this up and I kind of try to do it this way because it makes it easier and the reason it makes it easier is because this paper with Stampin' Up! is kind of backwards of how most adhesive sheet is. It usually happens that you peel away the one part and the sticky side is on the other. Theirs is opposite for some reason. I don't really know why so I'm going to cut this. There we go. So this is now going to be our piece to use. And it's kind of funny because when you're used to it being the other way where you pull away the release paper, it makes it very confusing. <laughs> so now I'm going to lay my trees. And as you can see, they both fit on there. I am going to tape them down just so I make sure nothing slides off when I run this through. And I'm going to run both of these through my die cut machine. So I still have my um, big shot because it still works fine and I don't have the money to purchase machines that replace machines that still work so I'm gonna turn this a little bit because I don't want this going straight through through the die cut machine so I'm kind of just slightly turning it and I am gonna go back and forth with these because I want to make sure it cuts but I will tell you one other thing when you run it through with the adhesive paper on the back it really makes all those little bits come off so much easier this off so you can see so this is going to be our piece and you can see it's completely cut oops I missed a teeny bit but we'll we'll cut that that's no big deal so I'm gonna put this off here and you can see this is cut pretty much through there might be a teeny bit here so I'm actually going to turn this this way and go through one more time just to be on the safe side because you don't want those little middle pieces to be getting stuck because that would be a huge pain all right so then we're going to pull this off And the best way to do it is kind of find a piece and then pull it over itself. All right, so that piece can still be used again. So we're gonna pull this whole thing out. Come on, there's still a little piece. Oh, it's this little thing stuck in here because it didn't go through the bottom part of that release paper. All right, so I don't need this. So I'm just going to get rid of that part. So you can see we only really got one little piece that was stuck. So that's not bad. Considering usually you would have to poke all the stuff out. So that works pretty well. And we're going to pull this one out. I'm just going to grab this by. And we just have really one little piece stuck in here. Now this little piece that's stuck in there. These are going to come out. So you can see we have still some pieces here. It's going to be really easy. So what we're going to do first 
is let me put those back up there we're going to work on our sentiment now i don't i could use the same thing again but instead let's change it up how about if we do sending love and hugs this is simple so and i see someone just sent me a message it popped up on this so this heat tool gun holder i actually got this from um, my friend Donna, who is a viewer, also she sent this to me, but you can get these from Crafter Solutions. They are here on Facebook and you can also find them on Etsy. You have lots of colors to choose from. So if you're interested in that, just check them out. Lisa is very, usually very fast at getting back to people. So if you have a question about that, you can find them there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put, and I'm gonna keep the same thing, I'm gonna go with navy. I want to see. I haven't used this before. Just want to check it. Oh, that stamps really nicely. I'm just going to stamp this to the side over here. Okay. One other thing I want to do. I may add a little bit of shading with the navy, but I'm not sure if it's going to be too dark. But what I want to do is I'm going to bring in a layer of smoky slate. Since I cut that down, I just think it'll be nice. It'll have a nice um, background flow to it. So I'm just going to add in one little piece with this card. So, but see, that's the fun of making things live because you can kind of work with something, think about it, maybe change your mind, which is why I really, really enjoy doing things live. So this one's going to be four by five and a quarter because it's almost like you are stamping with your friend who might be like, oh, try this. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull this. I'm going to just lift this up so one side picks up. Okay. I don't want to rip my paper. Then I'm going to just take my snips and just hit this little piece here. And same over here okay and I don't want to do it with navy because I'm almost thinking it might be just a little bit too dark see and then we can kind of also space it and I'm going to trim just this little bit because I have a little teeny lip here I just want to make it look a little bit more natural there we go so I have a sponge and just to give a little bit of color to the snow, it doesn't have to be dark. So I'm actually going to go with, I'm going to do a little bit of gray granite and I'm going to be super, super, super light. So I'm going to take, this sponge is definitely clean. It's just stained. I'm going to take just a little bit, just give a little dimension to the snow. Now you could also do the same thing that we did earlier with spraying this with shimmer since it's snow would look really pretty. One other thing you could do instead, I'm gonna sponge the edges of this. One other thing you could do too is you could use your um, shimmer brush or your Wink of Stella and kind of give it a snow, which I think I'm gonna do that instead of spraying. And I'm just gonna go just there. Sometimes you can kind of feel like you might need something on your card and really all you need is just a little bit of sponging. Sponging really does a lot for a card. All right, so there's that. Let me grab my pen. That way this will have some time. So if you have a new pen or maybe one you haven't used yet, it always is a good idea too. You could kind of um, put it on a piece of paper that you can clean so you could do this is an easy clean mat or you could even do like a um, uh, The silicone craft sheet because that's cleanable as well I'm kind of dipping and just adding just a little bit of shimmer in a couple spaces Might as well do a little bit up here Just kind of follow that Okay, now one other thing I'm going to do since I have this out, so those two are going to go there, is I'm going to take my trees and I'm going to just go over. So if I'm trying to not messy up the whole area, I also have 
my silicone craft sheet. I'm just going to put this down. Oops. And make sure that looks straight. You just put some shimmer on your trees. Not very much effort, but you're really getting a lot of look. Go down the stem on that one. Now I do have still these little pieces in, but that's going to come off in a minute. Okay. And I'm just going to come up. Might as well go to the bottom. Okay. So there's that. I want to just wipe off this little piece here. I don't end up sticking that in something accidentally. Okay, so now we're going to put this card together. So we have these, have these guys. You probably could hit these with your heat tool to let them dry, but we're just going to leave them set there for a minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this together first. So I'm going to adhere this to this. This one I'm going to put up with dimensionals because I'm going to put this behind it. Okay, so where is it? I'm going to put this flat down. Oh, look at that. Empty. All right. Oh, I think I have one right here that I can pop in. Hopefully it's going to work. If not, I have a bazillion others. Okay, and moving on. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to line this up. So again, this layer, in case you missed it, was three and three quarters by five. We're layering this onto a four by five and a quarter panel of smoky slate. I edged this with gray granite with a sponge. So I'm going to give this a little bit. I'm not going to press this down yet. I'm just sitting it because I want to make sure I have enough room that there's a little gap. Yep, okay, so that looks good. This one I'm going to go ahead and put dimensionals on the back of. Oh, that came off in a nice strip. You could also use a foam strip if you wanted to. And you could just cut it in pieces. That's another really easy idea. That looks good. All right, and now I'm going to put this on last. I'm going to put this onto my base. Remember, you are still going to need a panel of Whisper White for the inside because they're not going to be able to see what you wrote otherwise. Okay, piece of paper stuck. All right. That looks good. Okay, so this one's going to go down, but not yet because we have to put our little trees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel the back. This is only hard because I'm doing it in front of you because otherwise it comes off in a cinch. So I'm going to pull this off and it's going to pull out all those little bits. So see that? Look at all those pieces that stuck. We don't have to worry about poking them or wrangling them or anything like that. So I'm going to sit this down. I don't know exactly where I want it yet. So I'm kind of just sitting it just for eyeball. I'm going to set this one before I remove the backing. I feel like this one I want in the front. So I'm going to press this down because this has adhesive sheet. I think it has it all, but maybe in like one little tiny spot. So there's that. I'm going to take this. And I'm wondering now, this might be a little bit weird because of the layer. So we'll see. Only because there's a little gap, but it, it, it's still going to be good enough for me. If you don't like this part, you can adjust accordingly. Or you could also skip the dimensional layer too. So I'm not pressing anything right yet. I'm just kind of waiting. Hi Angie. Hope you're doing well. I hope it's warm in Florida. I'm sure you have the heat on if it's below 70. You'll be freezing up here. Come on. Okay. So same thing. I'm just peeling this off. 
and so again you have a, a little bit of a gap because this is just a teeny bit higher than this so I'm not sure how this is gonna look we're gonna see I think it should be fine and I might have to put a little so it is a you can see a little bit of the lump so if that bothers you, maybe you want to omit the dimensional layer, but I think it looks fine. But I am going to do one more thing. I want to add that snow mound, but I want it to be really, really, really light. So where in the world, here's my scrap piece right here in front of me. So I'm going to do gray granite, but I'm actually going to stamp it off a couple times because I want to see how light I can get it without it disappearing. So let's see if I can find a clean spot so you guys can see what I'm talking about. So when you stamp, in case you've never, and maybe this is something new to you, you can stamp in ink generation. So when you stamp it, first generation is when you first stamp it, second, third. So third is kind of light. Let me check out Smoky Sleek, because sometimes this is a little bit more of a translucent gray. Let me try this. And I'll move it up just a little bit, so I'm not dipping too hard. One two, three. I kind of like the other one. So I'm going to go back to gray granite. And you probably could have done this before I put that down, but you know, hindsight. I'm just going to try it one more. One, two, three. I think two. So I'm inking it up. I'm going to stamp it off. I'm going to stamp it. It's pretty light. So you can see it's just giving a little bit of shadowing so the tree doesn't look like it's just sitting there on nothing. And I know this is a very big shadow <laughs> for this little tree that has absolutely no leaves on it, but you just want a little something. The other thing you could do if you wanted to as well is you could just take your marker and you could go in really, really lightly. So just like a tiny, tiny, tiny tapping. So you could go just a tiny tapping and just create. So it looks like there's a little something down around the base, but there is our second one. I probably would have put this up a little bit higher so there's a little bit more of the stem, but I kind of think it looks cool just like that. So there is number two. So we have one and two, and again, that's using two different parts. So I'm gonna clean this off. I have one more idea. So we're at least gonna do three. And let me clean this. So, so far we have used um, Winter Woods and then we brought in that one sentiment for, for uh, or from Framed For You. Okay, so there's those two. So, one other one, I have my base and I'm going to use my one that has that little crinkly mark on it, but it's okay. Everything is going to still look beautiful. So, this is going to be our third base and our third card. What did I say over here? I wanted that with the tree. Okay, so I'm going to do the tree portion first. So we're gonna do the same thing again. So I think I'm gonna do the same thing with the layer. Did I keep that out? Where is my gray? Yep. So I have this and I'm gonna cut, because this again is three and three quarters, so I'm gonna cut this one more down. It's already four, but I wanna do five and a quarter. And you could even, so this is just like another way, if you wanted to, right when you're going to put your inside layer of your card, you could just put this little gray piece on the inside when you, and you could trim it down if you needed to. And it's just going to give you something added for the inside. So just in, instead of it being just a plain white something, you put this little scrap piece in, trim it so it fits. And if you wanted to not trim it, you could even put it so it was like even on both sides. And then there's just this little extra piece that you use. You can also recycle it because, you know, I keep entirely too much paper. So don't necessarily always do what I say. All right, so we have that and this. So it's gonna be one and two. And again, we're gonna go to the front just like that. I need one thing. So I'm gonna go ahead, I just grabbed an extra piece and I'm gonna grab my Knight of Navy and I'm gonna do this one part ahead of time. Let me grab, I'm going to swap this out, and I'm going to do the large tree. Okay, again, this is a pretty big stamp, so what I'm going to do in order to save a little bit of inking frustration is I'm going to lay it down and I'm going to ink it down. 
Now you don't want it too, too wet because it does have a good amount of detail to it. But I'm gonna put this here. Just make sure it looks pretty good. That looks really nice. Okay, so then we're going to use our large tree to cut this out. As you can see, it lines up pretty well. Lines up better if you're looking at it straight. All right, and I'm gonna put this here just to kind of hold this in place for now. Okay, because that's gonna be one part. Then for the other part, I'm gonna do some additional inking. So let me wipe this off because I need this block. So I'm going to use, I probably could use a smaller one now that I think of it, but I'm going to use these birch, birch trunks. So for this, you kind of have a couple options. I'm just going to slide this over while we wait. You have a couple options. You could have it so you have the birch at the top. You could have it so you have the more open birch at the bottom. I'm going to do it this way. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to run all the way along here. I'm going to try to do my best. This would be a great time if you have time and you have one handy to bring out your stamparatus or your stamp positioning tool. So I'm just going to ink this up. And that way all you would have to do is you could line it up exactly. Slide. Thank you for sharing. Appreciate it. Slide your cardstock down and then you would just keep re-inking. You could also do this a couple times if you wanted to without re-inking. So that one was first. There's second. I'm not sure how light third is going to be. Third, that's not so bad. And I know they're not really necessarily in a row. So if you want it to be that it's more, um, more consistent with your inking, and I really kind of like the second. So let's flip it. We'll do that over again. Here's what we're gonna do. Let me grab my scrap. Try this one more time. I'm gonna stamp off. If you did your stamparatus, these could all be absolutely perfectly even, so keep that in mind. Great card to use that for. All right, so that's gonna be our background. Move this over. All right, so I also have my tree, and what was the other thing I had? Okay, so I have a sentiment. So what we can do is we're gonna actually use, I'm trying to think what I wanna do for this. Just give me one second, because I had this idea in my head. So I have this here, this is here. It could be lined up a little better, but you know, sometimes you get what you get. We're going to have our die cut here. I feel like I want a piece of navy and then I want this piece, the sentiment. So I'm going to stamp my sentiment up here and we're going to cut that out with something. So I'm just inking up the full sentiment. Just like that. I'm going to put my ink away and I'll put this on the side. All right, so what I'm going to do with this, I did get out my stitched, where are they? My stitched scalloped rectangles. This is part of the So Sentimental bundle. So what is the smallest we can do for this? That is pretty tight, but it fits it absolutely perfectly. So that is the second smallest. And then we're going to cut the third smallest out of navy. Let me grab my little navy scrap. We have a little piece here. Should be big enough for, and we'll die cut all these things perfect at the same time. Let me show you what we're going to do. I'm going to keep this here just in case I need scrap for one more thing. But what we're going to do is we're going to line all these up. We're going to go through one pass. One thing I am going to do, I don't want this to go straight through my die cut machine, so I'm going to just tilt this a little bit. And same with this one, even though we have a big enough piece, I'm just going to kind of turn it just a little bit. And that should be good, just like that. Okay, so I'm just going to add my other uh, ac acrylic cutting plate on top and crank this through. Oh, you're new. Well, welcome, Paul. 
glad you joined us today. It's always fun learning something new. Okay, so pull this one off so we have one. And the nice part about these two is, in addition to being scalloped, they're also stitched. So they're really, really cute. So we'll put this just like that. And then we have our tree. Now with the tree, this does have kind of a stark edge. So if you wanted to, you could, um, you could sponge this a little bit. So let's do that. We'll just bring that in one more time. And where did I put my little sponge? So I'm gonna bring my um, gray granite back out. I'll just grab this one here. Okay, and I'm just gonna sponge. Now, since this is kind of dark with the navy, I'm gonna sponge the edges just a little bit harder than I normally would. And kind of bring the other parts of the layers together as well. And I'm gonna do this one. I'm not doing this one quite as heavy. Here we go. And might as well do this one too. Just bring it all together. Especially since this is a little bit crooked with the lopsidedness. Might take away a little bit of that crooked feel. You could even, if you really wanted this to be a much tighter feel, what you could do is you could actually, so if you did this with your Stamparatus and you had this all lined up, you could trim it so it was just like barely a 16th of an inch around there and it'd be a really tight feel to your card. So this way is the way we went. So we're gonna go like that. We're gonna go like this. We're gonna put our tree, but I wanna put this here somehow. So I think we're gonna do it like this, like something like that. And I really should, I'm gonna say this now, and you know, hindsight again, here we say, this would be much better if it was lined up with the Stamparatus because the crookedness of this is, I don't like it. So what time are we on? We are on 10.30, haven't been on quite that long. So since I have a minute, and I'm going to be a little bit anal about it. I'm going to get out my Stamparatus for this one. <laughs> so probably I have some people who should know I should have done this all along. But you know what? At least I'm doing it now. So what I'm going to do. And the only thing when you're doing this with your Stamparatus is you do have to figure. And here's my, here's my guys. You do have to figure um, where you're going to step it. Because if you're going to go down. So if you're going to do it this way. You want to be able to move your hinge down. So if you'll see what I mean, I'm going to put this right here. So you'll see exactly what I mean. Now, if you put this at the bottom, you can't really go down. You can't put it down. So you want to start your stamp at the top. That way you can pick it up, slide it down, pick it up, slide it down, pick it up, slide it down. Now, altern alternately, you could also put your paper and then move your paper down instead. So, you know, keep that in mind. Let's see whether it's going to be... Okay, so where it is, grab my magnet. Sorry, I'm having a, you know, I, I probably am more OCD than I give myself credit for. And then when I'm not, I get mad because I should have done it that way in hindsight. So I'll pop this here. So this will give you one more little technique you can learn before we're done. And I'm gonna do just like that. So in, I know this has ink underneath, but the good part is since it has a little bit of ink and it kind of is stamped off, all we have to do is ink it a little bit. But I think, I kind of like the second generation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ink it. Okay, I'm gonna, kind of sound like my niece. She used to always say, when she didn't know and she was little, she would always say, I'm gonna know. I feel like I'm saying, I'm gonna, I'm gonna know. So I'm gonna stamp this off, then I'm gonna lift it, then I'm gonna stamp that again, okay? So there's one. Not too dark. We're going to move down. We're going to see where our second one is. It's going to be perfect. This I should have done this in the beginning because this tool is great. Sometimes I'm just lazy. So I'm going to stamp off, lift, stamp. Oh, look how beautiful that looks. Move it down one, ink it. This I might have to scoot up now. That way it doesn't interfere. 
stamp off, stamp, move it, and five and a quarter. This one is a little bit bigger, so I'm actually going to trim this down. So I think, I think we're good. Sorry again about the camera movement. I always somehow end up pulling where I don't want. <clears throat> okay. Let's see. So four. Uh, oh, nope, that was right. I should have done one last one. I probably could have fit it. Let's see. Let me just make sure. No, you know what? Because it was supposed to be three and three quarters by five. So I'm going to trim this off. Five. And might have to take a little bit off of each side. There we go. So we kind of have our little eh piece here. So just so I'm not really, because we would have, we wouldn't have all three of those branches on there because it's lined up so nicely. So I'm actually going to trim it just a little bit. So I'm going to make sure I'm going to go a quarter inch. Let's see. So that's about four. That's too close. Four and what, four and three eighths. Okay, so I end up going four and three eighths. And I kind of like the top and the bottom border, so I don't want to make it too much slimmer. And we're just going to do that instead. That and this and that. Okay, so there we go. I changed it a little bit. So this ends up being, and I'm hoping I'm going to remember this because I need to write the directions for this video when we're done. This one was four and three eighths across, but I'm sure it's still four. Four and three eighths by three and three quarters. So four and three eighths by three and three quarters, if you're keeping track. If not, it doesn't matter. You can also eyeball it. So now let's put these layers together. Let me close this up so I don't have an accident. And do, 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 do. here it is. Put this down. And we're gonna do a little bit of popping up with this with a few of our layers. One other thing. Might as well be consistent. I'm going to just sponge the edges. I like this much better. It, Even though I'm not as OCD, it still looks much nicer than the one that was like kind of going all different directions. So sometimes you just have to know when to take the time to do it. Kenny Rogers said, you got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away, or know when to start it over. <laughs> there we go. So that looks nice. And I really think that this looks way nicer than the um, other way. I was going to do with my other four cards. So I'm very happy with this. I think it looks really good. So I'm going to put some adhesive here and then I'm going to put some dimensionals on these. So I'll put one, two, I'll put two at the bottom. Three, four. Same with this. Okay, so idea is, what we're going to do is, we're going to go like this, we're going to go like this, because we have enough of a gap there, and then this part will go kind of on top. Okay, so this has adhesive on it, so I don't want to put that one down yet. You could also add, prior to maybe putting, um, it kind of looks like a picture frame like this, really, it's like a, a photograph or a framed window. With this one, other thing you could do if you wanted to add something, you could add a piece of ribbon to wrap around there. So just kind of keep that in mind. I'm gonna set this, I'm not pressing, I'm setting lightly because I wanna make sure where I have it set up is where I want it. Oh, awesome, there you go. So somebody learned something new. Whoever helped Amy. This one I think I pushed a teeny bit too hard. Trying to make sure it's straight. Okay, and this. 
Then one other thing you could do, if you want a little bit of sparkle on your tree, is be careful because this is going to reactivate your ink. So just be careful. You can kind of fill in the color spot a little bit. It will also soften your stamped image slightly if you do it like this because it's going to kind of fill in. As you can see, it's bleeding the navy into the white parts, but you also just want to avoid that gray. But don't be too heavy handed with this because sometimes if you get a little too squeezy, like I'm, I never squeeze this brush unless I'm off of the paper because sometimes you'll get goopy spots and then it just looks so glittery in that one area that it doesn't look good. So it's kind of filling in the color just a smidge. And then you have a little bit of, hopefully you can see that shimmer on there. And then always you can see the blue came off. So you want to make sure you always wipe your, your brush off because it is kind of like a, um, blender pen with the colors. So I am going to wrap up for today. I'm not going to do a card number four since I had to do that one over again at the end and I don't want my battery to die. I am going to put all these cards out so you can see what we did and same thing again with the stamp set in case you missed this in the beginning. It does have a lot of die cuts with this or dies I should say. So there's a lot of potential for things and I'm going to tell you one other thing. This die here does not coordinate with this stamp. What this does is actually it cuts out the, the tree and then these little flat pieces will make pieces so you can make it stick out. So if you didn't want a stamped tree necessarily, what you could do is you could die cut this and then you flip the edges up and then you would just have a solid tree. So that's another option as well. But this is a, another really cool die. And I will tell you one other thing. When I first got this stamp set, I really loved it, but I struggled with getting it to work for me, it just felt like no matter what I did, the images never turned out well. And I think the problem was, is that I was inking it too much. So I was inking this and these trees particularly. I was just inking them too, too much. And it was really making them kind of goopy, if that makes sense. And I know that sounds a little bit ridiculous, but you can see that cuts that out perfectly there. So it was making them a little bit goopy. So if you have that problem, if you have this stamp set and you're trying it and like this right here, even you can see in this spot, I probably over ink that area just a smidge because you want to be able to see the detail. And more specifically, reason I mention this is if you're doing this with the foam stamp pads, so the newer stamp pads are foam, versus the older stamp pads, which I still have a lot of, these were linen. These don't tend to be as wet. So you don't really have that problem so much with this unless you've just re-inked it. But if you have that problem with the foam pads, a good idea, and I've shared this before, is to take a plastic spoon. I use the same one for any color that I do. I probably only wouldn't do it for white. But what you can do is you can press the ink. So instead of absorbing the ink out of it, you press the ink, you kind of push it over, to one side. That way you're not really wasting your ink because it's still in your pad. And then you can see, now you might not be able to see this on camera, but there is a very clear delineation here. So there's a line where this has less ink and this is still fully like factory inked. And just try inking it again. And also when you do it, if you flip your stamp over and do it that way, you're not gonna be pushing your stamp into this. So it's gonna give you a better ink and not an over inked look, okay? So try that if you have trouble with it and you feel like you're not getting the detail because when I did first get specifically this large uh, Christmas tree, I really had a hard time where it, it just looked goopy. So if that's the case, give it a try, see if you can move some of your ink around. And then all I do with this is every single time I'll just wipe this off with a cloth and then I use this for all the colors. So you can see there is a teeny bit of color there, but it has never come off into my other pads. And I've used this for pretty much every color, except like I said, maybe like the light pinks, but even the yellows, I've not used it for white, but that's a really a good idea if you have, if you have excess um, ink on something. And another tip, look how much nicer this looks. No Stamparatus. This one I did a little better job lining up, but Stamparatus, perfectly even. And then again, you could always use this little piece for the inside if you wanted to add something to your white layer there. Um, one other thing to mention, I did also use for these, with these layering um, scallop, layering stitch scallops, there is the So Sentimental stamps. And then you also have, I think it's called, 
sweetly sentimental i don't know i i can't keep track of all the names of these crazy dyes but this is probably this one and the other one that i featured when i went live on thursday are probably two of my absolute favorite dye sets tasteful touches this one has some great dyes but this one is nice because it has ones that will fit these sentiments and some different shapes but these rectangles are really really unique you can use them for so many different things I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. I would love if you are watching this on Facebook. Make sure you leave a comment. If you're watching this on YouTube after the fact and it's no longer live, I would really appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe on either Facebook and or YouTube. And if you're on YouTube, make sure you turn on the bell for notifications so when I go live, or when I post a new video, you will get a notification that I am live. So you will be able to find me again next Thursday. I'll be going live again next Thursday. I'm not exactly sure what time, but it will be on YouTube. So live on YouTube will be Thursdays. Live on Facebook will be Saturdays. Most likely Facebook will be in the morning, typically around probably between 9.30 to 10 start time depending on soccer, but for the most part, we should be good with that. And then Thursdays is usually going to be somewhere around six o'clock or so. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope you had as much fun as I did. I really enjoyed crafting with you guys. Even though we're not close together, it still is fun to know that people enjoy what you're doing and makes a lot of fun to be able to do something interactive with people. So thank you guys very much. I hope you enjoy your weekend wherever you are. I hope you're safe. Prayers to the people in California, Oregon, and Washington with all the forest fires. I hope that all starts to subside soon. Thank you guys for watching and have a wonderful weekend.